CJ Walker after the 21-22 season yep. that came to an end way too quick for not just most but all of us. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, we gotta uh, rewind what's what's happened over the last couple of weeks and months. Yeah. And we gotta start with asking you: Did you feel like being the fifth wheel on the car? <laughs> Yeah, most definitely. Um, like you said, just rewinding, just like with everything, you know, it just felt kind of crazy. Um, everything just happened so fast. I just like the whole season, mm -hmm. the whole process of everything just happened really fast. So yeah, it kind of feels like that in a sense. But I'm, what I wanted to relate to, uh, wanted to relate to, was more or less the whole point guard situation with Phoenix Hagen. Oh yeah. That you might or might have not been aware prior to signing with us. How much, uh, oh, when we look okay, back okay, to, the, okay. to the very start of the season, yeah. you know, one, we signed a guy or extended the contract with one guy, mm -hmm. he's not coming, then we fill in Obi Trotter, a vet, mm -hmm. who's not, just not the right fit, then we bring in another guy, uh, Terrell Allen from uh, yeah. Georgetown, who busts his knee after 70, 72 hours over here, yeah. and then we find that guy who's been on a contract or shortly on a contract somewhere in Greece, a left-handed guy uh, who played uh, college uh, before. Um, take me through the whole process from your point of view. What, what's it, because we never really yeah. discussed your point uh, until you, know, you coming in, uh, in in the fall. Uh, so really, I didn't really know about that at all. I didn't really have a clue. You know, everybody, once I got here a couple of weeks in, everybody kind of explained that Obi was here and the other guard that got injured, you know, unfortunately. I mean, they kind of told me that, but I just felt like, you know, everybody's kind of got lucky. I had the opportunity to come play and then Phoenix Hawking actually had a point guard to come play, so it kind of benefited us both, if that makes sense. So, like you said, it was just kind of like a lucky situation. You know, it just kind of happened. Um, once I got here, we just started rolling. So I was just grateful for the opportunity kind of fell into both our hands for Phoenix Hagen and myself. Are you in any way, shape or form able to prepare yourself diving into that kind of a situation? Uh, what, nah. what, what do you do to somehow get ready for that kind of stuff? Because yeah. basically you don't know what <laughs> what to expect. Yeah. Or did you? Or did you did you reach out to any or do you have anybody who's been playing pro A basketball? Or did you know anybody who's played in, in Hong before at some point? Uh, not at all. Um, like you said, it was kind of a fast situation that kind of happened. Obviously, you know, I got the job opportunity, signed a contract, got here as soon as possible. Um, I just got here and was ready to play. Um, I think I played like the second or third day I was here, had to get ready for Paderborn. So there was no time to really think about the situation. It was just time to get ready to play. Um, like I said, we just got rolling from there. Didn't look back once I got here and just, you know, just headed for the stars after that. So um, I think once I signed with the team, I think it was like a week before I got here, once I signed the contract, I, I think I DM Javon, um, just kind of went through the roster, see who was here, kind of DM, asked about the city and things like that on Instagram. But other than that, um, it was just kind of just go for it. There was nobody to really get advice from or nothing like that. And it was also my first year being overseas as well. So just kind of have the roll with the punches and just learn as we went. So that's kind of how the whole year kind of went for me. So uh, everything kind of worked out. I obviously had a good year. I felt we had a good season as a team and for myself. A lot of, a lot of boxes to, to check, check during the rookie season. <laughs> yeah. I mean, with, you know, with the whole Greece experience, mm -hmm. coming in over here, still playing under the, the you know, pandemic situation, yeah. if you will. Uh, plus injuries, you be, being one of the guys who's been injured as well. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's not the typical rookie season you're looking for. Yeah, not at I, all. I, I guess. Um, that's, just, that's just a part of life. It's just something that you got to go through each and every day. You just never know what can happen. Anything can happen. So you just got to go out there and take it day by day. And I feel like I did that. Um, first of all, you know, just leaving my daughter and things like that. Obviously, mm -hmm. being gone for seven, eight months, you know, being away from her, that's just a part of the process. And Everything just kind of happened for a reason. Like I said, just roll with the punches. You just got to take it. So, um, so yeah, that's pretty much was that. And just learning a lesson every day. Just everything that kind of happened, just learn from it and just learn the next time. So, most important question. You and I are hopefully grown men, mm -hmm. but how did she handle it? Um, it was tough. Uh, I feel like my daughter had a sense of what was going on, especially mm -hmm. being on FaceTime. Um, I just feel like over time, you could just tell, like, where's my dad at? You know what I'm yeah. saying? That was just kind of... A feeling that, you know, I felt that my daughter, obviously, you know, that's like my best friend. I know how she, her facial expressions and how she acts through the phone and things like that. So, it's like over time she kind of understood, like, you know, where's my dad at? So, that was kind of tough to see 
I'm just a go-to, but like I said, it's just part of the process. I play basketball for her to be able to provide and put her in a better situation than me growing up and things like that. So, as like I said, it's the process that I had to go through. I talked to it. Uh, I talked about it with um, Carrington a lot mm -hmm. and some other occasion. But was there any point during the season where you realized, yeah, I might be made for overseas basketball? Because not everybody is. Yeah. You know, there are stories about so many guys that mm -hmm. try to make it overseas, but they're just not built for it. And yeah. for me, from, from the outside looking in, I believe that you are one of those guys who is made mm -hmm. for making it overseas. Yeah. Who, who is, you know, just at the very start of his pro career, but who could have a long career playing yeah. in Europe or, you know, somewhere, yeah. somewhere yeah. outside the U.S., And mm -hmm. Was there any point during the season where, where you would say for yourself, yeah, maybe maybe that's my, my thing? Um, I would say it has its up and downs. I wouldn't for sure say, yeah, I'm completely 100%, you know, just built for it. Obviously, I'm going to yeah. do what needs to be done when it comes to playing and handling my business and things like that. Mm -hmm. But um, everything has its ups and downs. Obviously, I miss home a lot. I want to be home. And, you know, my parents and my, and my fiance coming to games and things like that, they're all coming to, come into effect. Um, but, yeah, like I said, it's just a part of the process. Um, Yeah, I feel like I, I kind of knew I was kind of built for overseas in a way. I think against Rostock, I think that was one of the best games I had early in the season. Playing at a high level like that in a away game, uh, you know, I can see myself, you know, playing at a high level like this for a long time. So I feel like just seeing myself perform and just get better over the season, I feel like that's when I kind of knew I can't play at a high level overseas. And obviously, you know, my wife will be able to come with me next year and, you know, just, you know, adapting with my daughter and just learning and things like that. I feel like once those things settle in, I feel like I'll be fine overseas and things like that. But at the beginning, obviously, you know, it's just a shell shock, like you said, the whole process with the point guards and then being ready to play within a week and just all the things. You don't really have time to think, you know, when you're worried about the game and you want to perform at a high level. So just over time, just seeing it, you know, most definitely, I feel like, you know, I could do this at a high level. So once things start settling in, I feel like I'll be fine. Um, how much of the, the overall C.J. Walker package as a, as a player came on display during that very season? Oh, I feel like... Every, it, or yeah. would you say yeah, I had to <laughs> adapt to the European style of play? What, was there anything where you say yeah, I, I got certain things in my mm -hmm. toolbox? Now, this I can't use over <laughs> here because it just, just does not work over here. But on mm -hmm. the other hand, I can, you know use something else that yeah. I haven't been using too much before? Uh, I would just say just a little technical stuff in basketball, like using the first step, putting the ball down first, just little things like that that I had to learn that, you know, you can get called for travels and things like Although that. Although you didn't so, get called too too much for travels. Yeah, I, I actually did pretty good, you know, just putting the Short ball legs. down first. Man, just, it helps out a lot. <laughs> uh, just little things like that, you yeah. know, that you know I had to get used to, just different ways. Um, and just the overall speed of the game, you know, things like that, the way people play and, how aggressive it is and things like that I had to get used to. But um, I feel like my toolbox was able to show this year, being able to score the ball, pass the ball, get my teammates involved. I feel like, you know, I had a full display, you know, what I could do. And I feel like I did it pretty consistent all year. Um, and I just want to keep growing and just keep advancing and just doing things like that. So, um, but yeah, I feel like that was just pretty much the only thing just to throw out, you know, kind of using my quickness off a of triple threat and things like that, putting the ball down. Um, but other than that, you know, I feel like I held my own all year. I feel like I led the team pretty well. So. Can't complain. Good, good to hear. Good to hear. Um, talk talk about the the um, not not important, but talk about how um, or to put it in, a, in other words, how easy mm -hmm. is it to run the team as a scorer and as a playmaker at the same time. Ooh, I wouldn't say easy Be because <laughs> when you once you came in, mm -hmm. it was super obvious that uh, a, a ton of our offense mm -hmm. would run through you as a primary scorer. Yeah. On the other hand, you would be our primary ball handler as a playmaker. Yeah. Um, which is you know yeah. it's, it's a hard it's, balance. It's tough to balance because yeah. you want to make your teammates happy, mm -hmm. but the team needs you as a scorer as well. Yeah. So talk about this balancing act. Uh, it's really tough. You know, as a point guard, you know, a lot of point guards are usually the facilitator. So that's obviously, you know, the first job, make sure everybody's involved. Um, like I said, like you said, it's just a great balance. Obviously, if I get my teammates involved early, they're making shots, they're getting active into the game, and then the defense is kind of laxed on me. They're not worried, oh, he's just pass first, pass first. 
and then I could take over a game in a matter of, you know, of a quarter or a half or whatever it may be. So it's just all a part of the game, just figuring out the pace of the game, who's hitting shots and things like that. And kind of once that happens, you know, you're not going to make every shot in the game. So sometimes your teammates look for you once they're not hitting and they depend on you. So you just kind of kind of take over that moment. So I just feel like it's just the feel of the game that you got to figure out. I feel like I figured out that feel pretty early. Um, and just knowing my teammates depended on me to do those things. So I feel like I just had to step up to the plate and do it. Um, uh, like I said, I feel like I did it pretty consistently. So um, it had its kinks. It had its up and downs. You know, you can't play a perfect game every game. But, you know, just be as consistent as possible. So um, I feel like I did that pretty well. When it comes to, to playing with the other guys, mm -hmm. um, what was, was the, the first thing that you would say, yeah, that there was a point Or that that in, in that aspect of the game we were clicking super fast, and what's the one thing you guys couldn't figure out until the end of the season? Um, what did you struggle with, and, and, and what was what, where have you been clicking right from the get go? Um, I would just say just the pace of the game, you know, playing fast in transition, trying to get easy buckets and things like that. Um, I feel like that's all the, how I've played always throughout my career in college, high school, and you know, just things like that, playing fast trying to score fast, trying to score easy, facilitating and things like that. I feel like that was super quick. Um, like I said, playing that Paderborn game, you know, within a week and getting used to everybody, I feel like we did that pretty well all year. Um, some things we struggled on, obviously, you know, just finishing games, just execution, just little things like that, you know, over the season that you just got to be consistent at. And I feel like we just kind of had our ups and downs with that where, you know, it kind of caused us a few games and, you know, just put us in a bad situation sometimes. I was more look, talking about stuff like, I don't know, let's say, Pick and roll situations. Uh -huh. There are sometimes you got combinations okay. of players where yeah. they oh, click yeah. right away. Oh, me and my because team. they already they right from the get go they have the, the right timing, mm -hmm. the right spacing. It's yeah. either a bounce pass or a chest pass, just the way the oh, big yeah. man okay. needs it. Okay. Stuff like this, and, and then on the other end, that's to, to stick with the, the mm -hmm. pick and roll uh, okay. so, example. Yeah. Me and Matsu have that. Yeah. To work on, and it's mm -hmm. and it just doesn't. Click the way you wanted to. Uh, I would say me and Matsu, I feel like that was an instant thing. Obviously, a point guard in five, man, there's a lot of ball screen situations, like you said. Um, his shooting ability, being able to shoot threes, you know, me getting downhill, getting to the basket, making two people guard me. I feel like our pick and pop thing was a really good thing for us. It's like, as soon as I got here, um, I feel like we handled that, me making a specific pass to him and things like that. I feel like that we clicked on really well from the beginning. Um, but, yeah, I don't really know, like, something that I really didn't, that didn't click throughout the year. I feel like everybody had their moments or just the feel of the game that I had with everybody. I don't really feel like I got disconnected from anybody or didn't have a thing that didn't really work out. I felt like I felt like it was just a team thing more than me and somebody else that didn't really click. Yeah. What did you learn about yourself during that season mm -hmm. that you didn't know before? Um, just about my yourself. mental space. Um, just overall, you know, being overseas for the first year, I just feel like mentally... I'm just being stronger. I just feel like, obviously, when you're at home and you have people that are like you all the time, it's easier uh, to accommodate with being overseas, you know, being, you know, basically a foreigner to everybody else. Yeah. Um, just having that mental space to know, you know, I could do this as long as I stay focused. So, obviously, I just became mentally stronger just over the years and things like that. And then, obviously, being able to show I could score the ball as well. Um, that's something I really didn't do in college, so doing that my first year as a pro felt really good to do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I feel like those are the biggest things, just you know, getting mentally stronger. Plus, it's, it's, it's just an overall new situation where you're not living on campus anymore, yeah. but, you know, living on your own. <laughs> really living on my living own. Living on your own. Literally, yeah. Having so. to cook for yourself. <laughs> All the time. Wash laundry, the dishes. Everything, yeah. So, so it was just really like different. This. Yeah, obviously having my fiance, that's obviously, <laughs> you know, a big thing to have. You know, she helps with a lot of things like yeah. that, you know, cooking, just little stuff like that, obviously. Um, it just makes it easier, you know, you can, like I said, just have your people there, yeah. you know, automatically. Like I said, have an apartment by myself, living by myself over here, and actually having to live every day, you know, by myself is obviously different. So that was just something I was able to learn about myself, that I could do a lot of things by myself that I don't really need a lot of people to do for me. And I promise I won't tell her, how much time did you spend cleaning up the, the apartment before she came over? Uh, before she came, Whew. be honest. Uh, especially like doing laundry, uh, that felt like that was just really that? tough. Laundry was really tough for me. Obviously, cooking for myself, I try not to eat out a lot. Yeah. You know, things like that. So I had to do a lot of things. I try to keep it as clean as possible all the time, but I mean, obviously, being by myself, hey, I'll guys. get to it. Yeah, we guys. we'll get Come to on. it eventually. So we, we will never <laughs> reach any kind of level where a woman say, "Hey, 
that's decent. Yeah. That's decent, Jimmy. <laughs> no, it, that's not gonna happen. Let's, let, let's, let's be real. Let's be real. Yeah. Um, final question when we rewind the, the 21 22 mm -hmm. um, season. When you when think back, has, is there any point or any situation, game, mm -hmm. little incident whatsoever? We would say, yeah, that's that's gonna stick with me for for the rest of my life. That's when I when I think back, mm -hmm. when I remember the the twenty one twenty two season. That's what I think of. Um, I don't think I can think of one specific thing. I just feel like the overall season, like I said, just being the first year, I feel like just that whole experience was kind of like the whole experience is one experience in itself. If that makes sense, um, it was so many things that. You know, made me change, made me grow, made me think about, you know, just put me in a different situation than when I came in. So I don't think I can think of one specific thing, but I think just the whole experience is something that I always remember being my first year, being able to play at a high level consistently, being able to play with a great team and, you know, just being that close to making it to a playoff. You know, just I feel like, like I said, the whole experience itself was just a great experience. I feel like I'll just keep with me forever. That's always, you know, that'll always yeah. stick with me. The thing is, You can only have one rookie season. Yeah, so like it's it will that be whole only experience. just yeah. one rookie season. Mm -hmm. so, any regrets? Uh, not at all. Um, I mean, when, when we talk about turning pro in general and mm -hmm. not knowing uh, where, where to go, just hey, there's an opportunity somewhere in Germany mm -hmm. in a town called Hagen. Uh, not that I can think of. I feel like Hagen is a really great city. I feel like they treated me really well. The fans, the kids, everybody, you know, was super supportive and. You know, going to a lot of different away games and seeing those cities, I'm most definitely happy that I came to Hagen. A lot of those other cities and being in even smaller cities and smaller villages and the gyms and, you know, different things like that. Hagen was, I feel like, was special to me in that case. Um, and just having the whole opportunity, them taking a chance on me, especially going through so many point guards and so many things, trying to figure it out. So just taking a chance on me was just, you know, a great experience. So I don't think I have any regrets. I feel like it, like I said, benefited me and Hagen at the same time. Um, I feel like we work together really well, and I feel like everything, you know, worked out itself. So I don't think I have any too many regrets or nothing like that. Like I said, I'm just super grateful for the opportunity. That's great to hear.